and I think this is time for us to start. Once again, for those who just joined us recently, my name is Sasha, and I'm from Levagon Tokyo Global Coding with Camps. I'm very happy to welcome you all to our How to Start Your Career in Data Science uh, with Kaggle Competitions talk, delivered by Hiroshi Yoshihara. And before we uh, move to the content of the talk, I would like to spare a couple of minutes of your time to introduce a bit about our Levagon community, what we are doing here, what is our relation to data science. Um, so let me quickly share my screen. Okay, cool. Cool, so what is Levagon? Levagon is a global coding bootcamp and what we do here, we teach people how to code, how to build web applications from scratch and recently how to build data science projects. We do it in two formats. One is a full time who are ready to dive into tech right now, nine weeks. And for those who want to have some family and work commitments, we offer a part time program, 24 weeks. So we teach uh, two main courses of web development and data science. And a bit stats about Livacon. Um, since founding in Paris, France, we had already 9,000 uh, students who graduated uh, over our boot camps in 40 cities around the world. And since we are very product oriented boot camp, um, our students built a lot of applications and projects during the boot camp and after the boot camp. And some of these applications later become startups. So this is an example of the companies uh, worldwide who are trusting us and who are hiring some graduates from our boot camps, applications built by our students and startups. Go cool. a bit about our Tokyo campus. Uh, since founding, we had 19 batches graduating and 250 alumni. In Tokyo, we have a very diverse boot camps. Usually people, uh, usually seven to 14 nationalities join our uh, program. And the average age is written here 29, but this is not exactly true. We have people from 18 to 50 years old joining us. We don't care about the background and age. We also run a tech community. So today's event is a very great example. We welcome speakers with uh, uh, some great knowledge to share. Um, and as I mentioned, we also run a data science bootcamp since this October. This is our first data science in Japan. This is just an example of the curriculum that we have. We spent a bit of time on the, uh, going through the Python, going through mathematics for data science, and then we dive deeper into decision science, machine learning, deep learning, data engineering, and the, uh, the icing on the cake is uh, the project week where actually our students built some data science project and they present it in front of everyone during the demo day. Okay, uh, that's a bit of the part-time bootcamp that we have. Um, outcomes, um, what, do you, what can you expect after graduating from the data science bootcamp? You can uh, land a job as a data analyst, data engineer, or data scientist. Um, that's about the learning materials. We have a lot of courses that are available to our students even after graduating from the bootcamp. The community, as I mentioned, 9,000 graduates all over the world who are ready to help you. Um, and those are the dates for our next bootcamps, full-time starting from April and part-time starting from February. The applications are open and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me uh, during and after the event. And uh, there was some shameless promotion from my side. Uh, right now I'm stopping it and I'm giving the microphone to Hiroshi. Um, and just to um, make you guys let you know about today's agenda, we will have presentation and sometimes Hiroshi will make some pauses between the main blogs and that's where he will be able to take your questions. So whenever you have some questions, feel free to write in the chat and wherever we have a chance, we stop and we talk about it. Okay, so now I'm giving the microphone to Hiroshi. Please go ahead. Um, my name is Hiroshi Yoshihara, and basically I'm a competition freak. I participated in many other competitions in various academic fields, like IJM in biology. And now I work as a machine learning engineer at IRIS. Um, I'm going to introduce this company later. And also I'm a public health researcher at the University of Tokyo. And recently I launched my own company. 
And uh, most importantly, I'm a Kagler and uh, I have the title of Kaggle Competitions Master. And I think that's why I was invited here to give a speech today. So uh, about my company, um, by the way, have you ever tried that painful test of uh, influenza with the uh, cotton stick in your nose? And uh, my company, Iris, is developing uh, innovative um, AI-powered medical devices for early and accurate influenza detection. You just need to open your mouth for a couple of seconds and uh, the device will detect flu with the throat images. So, oh, <laughs> okay. So let me explain about Kaggle. What is Kaggle? Kaggle is the world's biggest data science competition platform with more than 150,000 competitors. And uh, more than 40 competitions were hosted on Kaggle this year on 2020. And many competitions have a very big impact for our society. For example, this year, the Open Vaccine Project for COVID and the, the Motion Prediction Competition for Autonomous Driving Cars were hosted. And I believe uh, Kaggle is a perfect place to learn machine learning and build a portfolio as a data scientist. And, but the most important thing is that Kaggle is very, very fun. I'm going to explain why it is fun, but before that, uh, let me explain how does the competition works. First thing you need to do is to download the data for the competition and the data were split in three data sets. The first one is training set and the public test set and the private test set. The training data set comes with uh, teacher labels, but the test data sets don't have uh, labels. Then you are supposed to train your models based on the, on the training data set. And you will, submit, sub, uh, you will make submissions on public test data set and the private data set. And you will get feedback on public test data. And based on the feedbacks, you are supposed to make a generalized model, which uh, performs very good on private data, test data set. And your final standing is scored based on the private test data. So why Kago is so fun? Um, basically, the competitive spirit is the essential part of it. Um, in Kago, in each competition, you can see the real-time leaderboard. So sometimes you go up and sometimes you go down. It's very exciting. And also you are given tiers based on your previous performances in the competitions. And uh, in each competition for winners, there are a very good amount of prize money. Another good aspect of Kaggle is that uh, Kaggle has a, a discussion section and a, a notebook section where you can like post the discussion and you can also share your calls with other data scientists. It is a very good environment for you to learn data science. If you don't have a powerful machine for a competition, uh, no worries. On Kaggle, we have uh, free computational resources. You can use to a uh, free GPU up to, I think, 34 hours per week. Okay, so let me explain the Kaggle tier system. Mm -hmm. On Kaggle, we have five tiers, novice, contributor, expert, master, and grandmaster. And uh, it is not given only to the good performers on each competition, but uh, for example, if you posted a very insightful discussions or you shared some uh, interesting quotes, you're also given a tier according to your performance. Well, this is the first section. So let's have a short break here. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, write in the chat. So we take in a one minute break. Hiroshi, feel free to get some water. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It was a very rough start. <laughs> um, yes. 
Cool. So the first, I just uh, want to remind you the first uh, part of the talk was a bit uh, Hiroshi's background about his company and uh, generally what is Kaggle. So looks like people who gather here already know a bit here and there about Kaggle. We have a question from Svanna. Uh, Kaggle free tool, is it a web based? Yes, yes, it is web-based. So like uh, you can download the data from the website and uh, you need to submit your submission on the website. And discussions, pretty everything is on the website. Cool, um, are all the competitions related to the classification problems? Oh no, we have various tasks like uh, of course we have classification or regression and for images we have a uh, segmentation or detection and for natural language we have a uh, like language um how to say phrase generation task also cool and i see a lot of questions actually about your background it was very short mm -hmm. i felt like it was one slide but you went very fast straight mm -hmm. uh, so some people asking you to share your personal background um, how did you learn data science and how did you start? Uh, how did you get started on Kaggle as for the first competition? So maybe you can start from your personal background, learning yeah. data science and then studying uh, Kaggle competitions. Oh, that's a very good question, but I'm going to explain it in the third section. So please just hold on. <laughs> uh, so you mean your, your personal experience as well? Yes, yes. Okay, so guys, please hold on. Uh, a bit. <laughs> okay, uh, so we have a question from Vanessa. What level of expertise will be considered novices? Does it mean anyone joining Kaggle will be automatically considered as novices? Yes, exactly. Um, if you want to be a novice, you just need to register to Kaggle. So everyone can be novice and uh, contributor. I forgot the criterion, but I think you just need to participate in some competitions. So you mean like, even for example, you are like super cool uh, data scientist, you join a Kaggle, you are still novice on the Kaggle platform, right? Yes, yes. They don't even you need, need to from get the me medals to promote. Okay, okay, so you start from the scratch. Uh, okay, I'm recommending YouTube channels for more Kaggle learning as a beginner. Maybe it can come in the end, uh, together with sharing uh, mm -hmm. Hiroshi's LinkedIn and all the resources. Uh, Masi is asking, would you briefly introduce a company you work as CTO? Well, I have just registered my company last month and uh, at this moment I cannot tell the d detail about it, sorry. But I think if you follow me on the Twitter, um, I think I will talk about my company sometime, so yes. Cool, um, please don't forget to share your Twitter in the end of the talk. Mm -hmm. Uh, question from Savannah, how near are you to become Grandmaster? <laughs> That's a very difficult question. Recently, I'm actually very busy with my own work, so I didn't have enough time for Kaggle, so, but I still aim to be a Grandmaster maybe in a year or two years. So how long did it take you to become a Master? Um, I it took two years, two years. And how often did you participate in competitions? In total, I participated in, I think, seven competitions. But yeah, of course, if I participate more often, probably like it will be earlier. Okay, good. Uh, I think we can move on. Yeah. So. Unfortunately, there are many myths around Kaggle. The most common one is lack of relevance to the real world. Some might say problem settings in Kaggle is overly ideal, and some might say 0.01% improvement does not matter at all. Or others might say solutions are too complex to be used in real world. And I also sometimes hear people say Kaggle does not have any academic value. 
those are basically um, misinformation or sometimes disinformation. So I'm going to debunk one by one. The first one is problem to ideal. Well, of course, uh, more or less competition problem is more simplified compared to the real world problem. Um, below the figure shows uh, like a typical workflow for a data scientist. And the competitions mostly focus on the data processing and the modeling. So does this mean cargo competitions are not relevant to the real world problem? Just remember the fact that every year tens of companies and organizations pay cargo to host competitions. Are they doing that for volunteers? Obviously, no. Um, the point here is that it is possible to extract and translate the, a real world problem into a simplicated, uh, sim simple competition program. Uh, problem. The next one. Does point zero one per does point zero one percent improvement really matters? Well, to be honest, in most cases, um, top solutions in a uh, in a cargo competition performs very same, and the difference are too small to be significant. But the point here is that the insights you learned during the process to improve your score are usually of great importance. I like to quote a phrase from my boss, the CTO of ILIS. Cargo can be compared to F1. F1 is a sport where um, people try to learn how to turn and how to, how, how to run, how to turn and how to stop the car at more than 300 kilometers per hour safely. Obviously, for most people, for all ordinary people like us, we don't need a car running at more than 300 kilometers per hour. But why do those companies do that? Companies participate in F1 because it is a showcase of their technology and the, tech and the technical insights they get from there are very valuable. And I believe it is the same to Kago. And next one. Are solutions too complex? So please look at this figure. This is a top solution from a previous competition. And uh, they used, I don't know how much, around, uh, I believe, 10,000 features and uh, tens of models. And they mix them together. And they even did a special post-processing to the predictions. So obviously, this solution is very complex. I must agree that for tabular data competitions, the top solutions are likely to be very complex, a mixture of tons of lightweight models such as gradient boosting. Uh, but if you pursue only model accuracy, it is completely fine because they are very lightweight. Anyway, it won't take a long time to run them. And moreover, there are many code competitions of Kago in which solutions are run on Kago server with uh, limited resources and time. And actually, due to, uh, due to the restriction in the resources, there are many innovative ideas were born in competitions. So finally, the last one. Does Kago has academic value? Well. I, I must say, Kago is not an academic society, so it is not supposed to like generate a truly innovative uh, machine learning uh, architectures such like ResNet or uh, AlphaFold 2. But of course, academic societies have their, uh, it's not perfect. There are many state of the art models proposed in academic societies. But surprisingly, they are not performing, they are not always performing very good on external data sets, for example, on Kaggle. So I think Kaggle is a very good place to test SOTA models. And uh, at this moment, uh, I think Kaggle is of great practical values. I'd like to emphasize that Kaggle and academic societies are not incompatible things. They should like collaborate. And uh, 
Moreover, there are many research competitions recently on Kaggle. Research competitions um, aim to advance SOTA in a specific domains. Actually, this year, um, I won a research competition and I was privileged to present and write paper in the biggest uh, conference in medical image processing. Well, this is the second section. Cool. We had some uh, questions from the, the first section as well. Uh, some questions were sent. Mm -hmm. um, so how long does it take for you to finish one Kaggle competition on average? Um, usually the competition takes around two months or three months. So um, I usually participate in competition which has begun just uh, like uh, shortly. So usually I spend uh, two months for a competition. You mean like you juggle something, right? You juggle your work and the competition. It's mm -hmm. not like you are uh, devoting two months nonstop to the competition, right? Yes. If I were still a, like a typical student, maybe I would like devote myself for a competition. But now I have, I have my work. So like I will do my work in the daytime. And after that, after my work, I mainly do kaggle. Cool, thank you. Um, should everyone participate in only running competitions? Uh, no, that's not true. If you want to learn something from Kaggle, there are many good competitions which are already finished. So there is a like, late submission, so you can submit your model even after the competition has finished. But if you need a medal, if you want to get promoted, if you want a higher tier, um, you need to participate in uh, running competitions. So regarding the promoting, we have a question from Vanessa. If I participate in a lot of Kaggle competitions but don't win any, do I still get a chance to be promoted? Um, I don't think um, you will not get any medal if you do it very long. Yes, you will improve your skill and uh, you should be able to get a medal. If you don't have medal, unfortunately, you will stay in the same tier. Oh, um, good. So we have a question also, how many average hours do you spend on Kaggle during the competition? So like you said, two months after work, right? Um, mm -hmm. Question from Sergio, how do you choose which competition is best to join if you are a beginner? Well, that's a difficult question. Um, recently, the Kaggle competitions is getting, how to say, um, complicated one by one. So I don't think they're like easy competition or hard competition. I think every competition is uh, difficult to an uh, extent. So I think you just should choose um, a field which you're interested in. Like if you're interested in image processing, you should go there. And if you're interested in tabular data, you should go there. Cool. Um, question from Yoshihiro. How helpful is Kaggle rank to get a job as a data scientist? Would other factors matter? And I believe you are answering this question in your next blog, right? Yes. <laughs> so yes. hold on. Yeah, hold on a bit. Okay, uh, so far I see that we are good. So we can move on to the next blog. Yes, please. Okay, so I'm going to share my experiences and some tips for Kaggle beginners. Well, I got to know Kaggle itself in a, in a very interesting data science lecture at my university. Um, at that moment, I, I had plenty of experiences in programming itself. I wrote C and JavaScript, but um, about other subjects, I didn't put much effort in that. So I was a bad student. So I just registered to the Kaggle and my first, first impression on Kaggle is that, wow, this is a very, very interesting MMO game. The first competition I participated in was VSP Powerline Fault Detection. 
And this was a time series anomaly detection. And uh, actually time series data is one of the most difficult kind of data. And most competitors there used very complex uh, neutral networks such as LSTM, Attention, and many other. And uh, we uh, and I didn't understand well those methods, so I just modified a notebook which was shared on the Kaggle notebook, and uh, and I was uh, and my performance on public leaderboard was not good. But I was lucky um, because most competitors who used complex neural networks, uh, their submissions are overfitted to the public test data. So my rank jumped up and I got bronze medal in my very first competition. It felt very good. So uh, I learned a lot from my first competition. First one, there are many cargo specific keywords like CV, LB, shakedown, adversarial validation, and uh, a lot of them. Uh, I'm not going to explain those words here, but the point is don't be lazy and Google them up if you don't know them. And the read cargo discussions and the notebooks because they're the best textbook for cargo. And another thing, um, before you run uh, many experiments, you must build a reliable validation scheme. That is uh, like a foundation for all the models. And also complex models do not always win. This is a very good game. So after that, I asked my engineer friends to join Kaggle and we teamed up and tackled many competitions. Finding a teammate is always a good idea because sometimes you, you make its excuse to yourself, like I'm too tired today, so I don't want to work. But if you, if you have a teammate, you can like uh, make up for each one's weak point. And um, as our team win the competitions and my tier goes up, um, I started to get more and more uh, job offers on LinkedIn. So I think, Cargo tier matters uh, with regards to uh, your career. Right after I start, um, I finished my first competition on, on Cargo, I joined uh, an AI startup, Alias, by a referral from my friend. And there, CTO and the whole company were interested in the potential of uh, Cargo, and they supported my challenges in Cargo. Here, again, I'd like to quote the phrases uh, of my CTO. Cargo is to Ilias is what F1 is to Honda. I really love this phrase. And uh, so with the help from my company, I was able to win the Panda Challenge, the competition. And uh, the insight from this competition helped uh, our product development a lot. So I learned a lot of things from Kaggle, theories of mathematics, statistics, machine learning, and uh, of course I earned skills of uh, programming and the data wrangling and the intuition, and also uh, a bit of data visualization. Those are the skills you will need to be a good data scientist. So this is my competition routine. The first thing you need to do is a careful EDA. Also, you can say it is a torturing data. And then next, you will make a baseline model and make a good validation scheme. Next, uh, search for useful materials such as pre previous competitions or papers. And you will, do a, you will make a to-do list before you run experiments. And the next one is uh, most uh, hard, the hardest part of competition. You will need to run like hundreds of experiments. And at the end, you need to pray. So here I attached some uh, resources, which I think uh, is useful for cargo. I will share the slides later, so please have a look at it. I recently developed a uh, toolbox for competitions. Yeah, 
So this is the third section. Cool, thank you so much. Uh, it's very encouraging for people who uh, did not come from the computer science degrees, um, or who don't have a lot of experience working as a data scientist. Uh, so let's move on to the questions. Um, so you covered the question from Yoshihiro, how helpful is Kaggle rank to get a job as a data scientist? So uh, Hiroshi got a job offer after his first competition, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, how high was your rank at that time? At that time, because I finished only one competition, so I was a contributor. But soon after that, because I was uh, participating in two competitions at the same time, so I got another silver medal. So soon I got promoted to expert. Okay. Um, are there any other factors that matter for getting a job as a data scientist, I assume? Uh, well, um, of course, Kaggle tier is a, how to say, uh, a good measure of how you're good at making accurate models, but also you, it depends on the company, but all often they don't judge you only um, on the, your tier. Like, uh, how to say, in general, your character or your capability in other domains. So you mentioned that you got a lot of requests on uh, LinkedIn, so it means you have your information public on Kaggle so people can see mm -hmm. your uh, credentials and contacts, right? So they can add you on LinkedIn. Yes, yes. So I believe it is very important how you show your, yourself, how you publish your, yourself. Cool. Um, next question. Um, let me get a question from Jerry. Can one only work with teammates you know in real life, or can you team up with people you meet on Kaggle? Well, that's a good question, because sometimes that can cause a problem in, in Kaggle. If you team up with a, a person you don't know, there is always a risk. For example, the person might, might cheat, and after the competition, your team will get removed from the leaderboard. That's very painful so um, the best option is to team up with someone you know but uh, for example um, there are some uh, communities in Kaggle uh, like the open data science it is uh, basically a Russian speaking um, community and uh, in Japan we have Kaggler JA it is a Japanese speaking society so you can get to know some other Kagglers in advance and uh, there and the uh, so the communication with them, you can learn um, what the person is like. So you can judge the person based on your intuition and uh, team up with them. Thanks. We have a couple of technical questions. I will definitely come to them uh, again uh, in the end of their talk, if time allows. Um, question mm -hmm. from Tan. What is your technology stack while competing in Kaggle competition? Um, technology stack means what tool I use, I suppose. Yes, um, I yeah. use um, basically Python and uh, I use like many popular libraries like XGBoost, LightGBM, CatBoost. And for deep learning, I use PyTorch. And uh, I train all models with my own toolbox, Kuma Utils. Well, is your GitHub public? Can you share the link to your GitHub afterwards? Yes, yes. The link is here. Uh, I published it on the GitHub. So after I share the slides, you guys can go there and uh, hit the star. <laughs> oh, there is an amazing person, Kota, who already shared your GitHub. Oh, uh, thank GitHub. you so much. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, okay, let's move on to the next block list. Yeah, the last section is whether cargo is useful with regards to business. Well, spoiler alert, the answer is true. So um, to discuss this matter, let's sum up what cargoers are good at and what they are not, what they may not good at. Cargoers are good at torturing data 
and design good validation schemes, then choose proper algorithms and then build accurate models. And I think there are lots of cugglers uh, are good at reading and implementing new algorithms on published papers. But uh, cugglers may not be good at uh, designing the whole problem, such as what kind of data to collect or which metric is suitable or how the output should be like. This is simply because in competition, the data structure and the metric and the output format are fixed. And the uh, Kaggle has uh, basically has nothing to do with data engineering. So I think many Kagglers are not familiar with relational database or SQL or such as. And the uh, Kagglers are not always good at data visualization, but uh, I'd like to emphasize uh, Kaggle is a very good place to practice data visualization. And uh, around me, um, there are many Kagglers who like to work alone. So in that case, um, Kagglers are not good at communication, communicating with non-engineer people. And due to the same reason, Kagglers are not good at large scale software development. So let's say you are a leader in the engineer team. So how do you utilize Kagglers as a team member? Uh, first, you need to correctly understand what uh, your member are good at. If the Kagler is not good at uh, communication, so Kagler and the liaison is not a good idea. I believe a good team is like a Navy fleet. Let's say you have a aircraft carrier and a missile cruiser and the submarines. Um, they make up for each one's uh, weak points. That's a very important point. And uh, a more specific way to utilize Kaggle is to transform the original real world task into a competition-like task. It is very competition specific, so it's not always possible, but I would like to introduce an example of uh, my company. And the most important thing is to encourage them to Kaggle. This can be done in a way, for example, um, approve Kaggle related activities during work. And uh, don't forget, winning a competition is also winning reputation of your company. There are many leading tech companies in the world and in Japan, which uh, utilizing Kaggle. There are many companies have so-called Kaggle team as a specialist team in data analysis. And there are many companies encourage their engineers to participate in Kaggle competitions. Those are the examples on the right. Probably DNA and the wrist are the most uh, famous examples of them. They both allow their engineers uh, participate in cargo competitions during work, but the ratio of it is limited based on their performance on cargo. And my company, Iris, just like DNA and the wrist, also allow engineers to participate in cargo competitions during work. But unlike them, in Iris, uh, we don't have any limitation based on their performance in cargo because and uh, we value the learnings from the competition. So participants are asked to share the learnings after the competition. And the participants can use companies cloud GPU instances, <coughs> instances when they are not occupied. Also, um, our company hosted an in-house competition as a part of development. We developed an online competition platform um, in order to push up the accuracy of our device, and it was successful. Now, this uh, machine learning competition platform are published as an open source project. So that's it, let's review the take home message.
Chicago boosts your data science skill set in many domains, and many companies utilize Kaggle. Thank you for listening. That's it. Thank you so much, Roshi, for your amazing presentation. Uh, guys, feel free right now to um, shoot your questions. We have 15 minutes late, uh, 15 minutes left. So uh, there is a Q&A session right now. Um, people asking if it's possible to have slides as a reference. Um, are you planning to maybe share it on your GitHub? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm going to share the slides. I don't know, um, how should I share it? Um, I think it's better to post the link on the Meetup page. Yeah, I think Meetup page, some people yes. are joining not from the Meetup, so um, you can also share it on your GitHub as it's possible or ah, any yes. Twitter. So I will share the slides on Twitter and uh, LinkedIn, so. Thank you so much. I hope that uh, a lot of you guys found this session uh, helpful. And uh, for, mo for many of you, this session helps to uh, secure a job as a data scientist. Uh, once again, we still have time. Feel free to ask all of your questions. And uh, we still have time. So I'm coming back to some questions we missed during the talk. Uh, we have plenty so we had a, of time for questions. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. so we have a question from Vanessa. Uh, could you please elaborate more on the Panda challenges if time allows? Okay. Uh, about Panda competition. Um, it was a competition to classify uh, images from uh, biopsy. It is, uh, so it is a uh, uh, image of tissue and uh, there were roughly two big challenges in this competition. The first challenge is that the image of tissues are very, very huge. It's like 30,000 pixels by 30,000 pixels. So it's not possible to give this huge image to a simple CNN model. And uh, another challenge was uh, label noises um, because the annotators are not uh experts so there were mistakes in annotations so we need to correct those uh, noises by ourselves it was a very good competition thank you um uh, what is a reliable validation scheme ask a uh, question from sabina mm -hmm. that's a yeah very important question yeah i should have explained it a good validation scheme is, uh, okay, let me show this slide. I said there are three data sets, training, public test, and the private test. A good validation scheme is that um, the score on training set is similar to the score on the public test set, and also on the private test set. So the score should be close or have the same um, tendency. If your score on training set improved, your score on public set and the private set should also improve. That's a good scheme. Cool, thank you. Have a question from Vanessa. Vanessa, no problem asking too many questions. It's never too many. Uh, Non-related yeah. question to Kaggle. You said you once participated in biology competition. Do you have any background in biology apart from computer and data science? Yes, I didn't explain, but um, actually I'm not a like, computer science student. My background is uh, pharmaceutical science. And uh, my thesis is about uh, economics, about drugs. So yes, I have uh, not a big, but a small background in biology. I participated in a biology team for a year. So I did experiments and uh, mathematical modelings there. So you mentioned that you learned programming, uh, right, in university. So did you learn programming by yourself? Well, actually, I started to learn programming uh, when I was in middle school, very small, um, by myself. There was a, like, programming club in my middle school. So I joined there and learned by myself. Thanks. Um, question, what are the differences between public and private test sets? 
Well, um, the biggest difference is uh, you cannot see your score on private test data set uh, until the competition is over. So the visible one is public and the invisible one is private. Cool. Question from Julian. So it's quite important to have, uh, is it quite important to have background related to the theme of the competition in your case, biology? Yes. Um, in many competitions, if you have a domain knowledge in it, maybe you will have an advantage, but and that doesn't mean you always need domain knowledge you know, about the competition because in many competitions, the winner are not the expert in the domain. Thank you. Um, maybe a bit questions about the, related to job hunting. So you said that you got some uh, job offers via LinkedIn, but do you think uh, if the person even not scoring very well on Kaggle, if the person, uh, you know, having some Kaggle competition experience in the portfolio, will it increase chances of this person to get a job as a data scientist in Japan? In Japan. Yes, now in Japan, um, there is an increasing number of companies who started to at least care about Kaggle. So, um, of course, uh, it's better if you have a uh, like good tier such as expert or master, but even you don't have a tier, but uh, I think that experiences are important, should be useful to some extent. Um, you mean useful for job hunting or useful for just advancing as a data scientist? Um, I think in job hunting to an extent. To which extent? So for example, um, how do you think uh, when the person is doing the job hunting as a data scientist, uh, what is the main thing, what kind of a key point that companies are paying attention to? Um, for example, in my co company, um, we have a small Kaggle team, and uh, not everyone there has a like ex um, have a, has a tier of expert and uh, higher. But still, um, the experiences in the Kaggle means uh, something. How to say? Uh, at least they have a basic skills uh, for the competition, and uh, that's a very important thing. We have a question from Joe. Is it easy to do well in a competition if you are working full time at the same time? Yes. Um, I know a lot of people who are working full time and uh, like just uh, doing cargo after work, but still there are like many masters and even grand masters like that. So I think it's possible. And just a small addition to this question, for those who want to learn data science, data science we have the part-time data science bootcamp starting uh, from February. So uh, you can uh, learn data science while doing your full-time job on Tuesday mm -hmm. and Thursdays after work and also Saturdays full-time on campus uh, in our uh, base, which is Impact Hub Tokyo in Meguro. Cool. Do we have any other questions? Well, that's a huge question from Mario. For someone with no programming background looking to make a shift into a data analyst position, what, in your opinion, are the most important technical skills they should focus on acquiring SQL, Python, C, etc.? With that said, is it realistic for a beginner to use Kaggle as a way to differentiate themselves when applying for entry level position? Well, um, to be specific, um, I think uh, data analysis position is different from a data scientist or data engineer. So um, with regards to data analysis, I think the skill sets required uh, are slightly d different from what people do on Kaggle. So um, actually, I have no idea since um, I'm not familiar with what um, data analysis do so I'm sorry uh, I cannot give a clear answer to this question but um, I would say and the uh, experiences on Kaggle should help you because at least you will know how 
um, you will know the theories of uh, machine learning and uh, like data wrangling or data intuition. Maybe it's not directly connected to your uh, data analysis position, but it must help it. Good, thank you guys. We have five minutes left. Uh, so this is your last chance to torture Hiroshi with questions about his data science experience. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a bit from my side, I actually contacted Hiroshi because I learned that he managed to get into data science even without the data science background, even without any degree in computer science. Uh, so his degree is completely unrelated uh, to the data science or programming. So uh, for people who think that the data science is very difficult to get into, it's not. It's, it's quite possible. So the Kaggle competitions is one of the way for you to stand out from the crowd and to uh, show your value to the company. <laughs> Swana is not a silly question. Many people might have it as well. Me personally, uh, what is the meaning of torturing data? Yes, um, torturing data means um, scrutinizing the data until it confesses to something, something important some in information. So you will look through, you will go through the data very, very carefully. If there's anything wrong with the data like that, we call it torturing data or EDA. That's, it shows that the data scientists still have a sense of humor, despite uh, maybe having an <laughs> image, <laughs> being, like having a very, you know, complicated mind. <laughs> <laughs> How many data scientists do you have in your team and in your company? Mm, I believe there are around 10, 10 data scientists. Wonderful members. <laughs> do you have any women? At this moment, uh, no women. So we are hiring. Oh, you're hiring. Good. Um, we'll be back to you with that question later. So maybe you can also share the job uh, requirements. So maybe it will be yes, helpful yes. for some of you guys. Uh, cool. Are you hiring women or just? <laughs> oh, of course, not only women, but yes, okay. in general, we are hiring new data scientists. Cool. Once again, guys, last questions. I know we have still a lot of people here. And if you have something on your mind, feel free to shoot. Um, question from Hiro. My, I missed it. Could you tell me about your next goal as a data scientist? Are you interested in specific domain knowledge which you want to apply your skill? Well, um, I want to be a generalist rather than a specialist in a specific domain. So um, I think I will keep cuddling and uh, I will aim to become a grandmaster. Thanks. Um, just maybe also silly question. So aside from getting higher in a ranking, do you also get some financial prize for participating? Well, um, if you win a competition like uh, top three or top five in the competition, you can get a um, uh, very massive prize money. Oh, for so example, you... for this pump, yeah. Go. What is the maximum uh, prize that you get? You got? Well, actually, I never got the prize money yet. So <laughs> that that's also a um, motivation for me to participate in cargo. I want to get the money. <laughs> Cool, and uh, probably this is the time for us to wrap up this talk. Um, thank you so much, Hiroshi, for your very informative and engaging presentation. Uh, very motivating as well for those who want to get into, who want to get their feet into the data science field. Uh, thank you everyone for coming as well and for staying with us until that long. Uh, we are planning to have more data science uh, events and talks in the future. Feel free to uh, follow the Levagon Tokyo Meetup group. 
And also, I believe that uh, Hiroshi will share his Twitter here. So make sure the people following him uh, do please share your Twitter just to, you know, uh, people interested about your experience as a CTO or maybe some updates about your company. Sure. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So Vanessa is asking about the question about the, the data science bootcamp in February. Um, I will just share probably, we don't have a lot of time left. I will share the link to the website where you can download the syllabus and read about uh, the curriculum, the teachers, and what's included. Did you share your Twitter? Oh, I'm going to share it. Oh, I mean, can you write it down in the chat? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. I'm going to copy and paste the link. Yes. Cool. So now we have uh, links to their data science uh, part time with Kim for those who are interested. Also, Twitter, Hiroshi's Twitter. And somewhere up, we had a link to Hiroshi's GitHub. I found it and I will post it just in case. One more time. Cool. Okay. Um, you can always ask uh, questions to me on Twitter. You opening the Pandora box, Hiroshi. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Okay, um, this is one question about Levogon. Is it fair to assume that Levogon's course is more geared towards data scientists and not analysts? No, actually, it's geared to both, uh, towards both data scientists and data analysts. We uh, go through their disciplines that are used both for data science and data analyst analyzes so it completely depends on you where you want to utilize it cool thank you everyone for joining one more time and i'm uh, wishing a great evening for those of you who are in japan and maybe great afternoon for those of you who are in the different uh, time zones. Thank you so much again for joining and Hiroshi also. Thank you for amazing talk. And thank you for organizing this amazing event. Yay. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much. We'll wrap up this event. Bye. Bye.